Benvenuti in questo episodio di Inglese vero Podcast. Oggi ascolterai la conversazione tra me e il mio amico William Marino from the USA. L'episodio è a livello A, level A, quindi adatto per i neofiti e per il livello pre-intermedio, da usare sia come passive listening che come listening per l'esercizio specifico. Hi Stefano, how are you? I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, William Marino. So good Hello to see to you. Hello to everyone. So good, good to, to see, see you. you too. How we long have has... a del- Sorry. Uh-huh. We have we have a delayed uh, connection. Yeah, I think you're very far away, aren't you? Yes, Michigan, USA. Oh my god. <laughs> What time is it there? Here it's uh, half past four. What time is it there? It's 10.30 in the morning. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Breakfast time? No. <laughs> Brunch. Brunch time, yeah. So, yes. Uh, so for our friends, we're going to do this. We're going to do the first 10 minutes, just very basic conversation, you know, like uh, where you're from and this. And then... This is the episode level A, level basic level for our like basic students. And then after this, we can have a normal conversation for the other level, for the intermediate advanced students. Is that okay for you? Yes. And how much time in total will it ah, be? 20 minutes, you know, 30 minutes, you know, whatever. You know, it's, it's not long. It's not long. Yeah. So, so for our basic students... <laughs> Do you want to tell me something about yourself? Where you're from? What what your profession? Where you live? Well, my name is William Marino. I'm a Sicilian American. I was born in the United States, but my family was from Sicily. From Sicily? Uh, I moved back to Italy when I was uh, 28 years old. And I had a great career in Italy teaching English as a second language, uh, mostly to Italians, but also from students from all around the world. And I helped them accelerate their careers, and they helped me accelerate my career and my life because it's a very rewarding profession teaching English as a second language. After decades of living in Rome, I started to get a bit older. And so the city was fast and I was slow. And I moved back to Michigan where I've been for seven years now. But I still teach online every day, mostly with Italian students, but also with students from all around the world. Wow. Seven years back in Michigan. That's such a long time. Seven years back in Michigan, and I dream of Italy every night. Yeah, I believe that. What is it? What is it like where you live now? Is it a village or a small, a small city? Okay, great. I live in Metro Detroit. Metro Detroit has three or four million people, like Rome, but I don't. I don't live in Detroit. I live five miles outside of Detroit in a city named Royal Oak, which is part of the metropolitan Detroit area. There are no farms between us and Detroit. It's one big metropolitan area, but it's suburban. Most of the people live in three-bedroom villas. But we live in a townhouse, a condominium project where we have a pool and a club. And I have a car that uh, I lease every two years. I get a new car. Uh, it costs me about $200 a month. Wow. To have a car. Imp- impossible in Italy. You know, these deals are not possible in Italy. You know, this is the good thing yeah. about America. huh? Yeah, it's a difference because in Rome, I couldn't have a car. There was no parking. I had no Italian driver's license, the insurance, the tickets, too complicated. 
but here I can have a car and my wife and I enjoy the privacy of going where we want, when we want. And gasoline is only $3 a gallon. So, <laughs> you know, that's much less than what it costs to own and operate a car in, the, in Italy. Yeah, $3 a gallon, which is $3, $3 for, what is it, a gallon, four liters, nearly four liters? Do you know the conversion for a gallon? Yeah. I think so three dollars, it'd be about three, three euro for f- four liters. Nothing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In Italy, it's, it's about two dollars for one liter, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. So for four liters, it would be eight. Here, it's half as much, less than half as much. Less than half. And, and in Michigan, Michigan, we don't have the cameras that take the photos. You know, if you're going too fast, if the light is red, no cameras. Oh, so you, <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. So you can go all as fast as you want. Well, you obey the law, but they, they can't have what we call here ticket traps. Yeah. This where is, the lights. Yeah. I think it's fair, you know, that we, we can talk about it later because it's, uh, I hate, yeah, what is it, uh, uh, ticket traps, yeah, they don't prevent speed, they just prevent you making money, you know, because you have to pay a lot of money at the end of the month, especially in Rome, yeah. oh my God, if you had a car in Rome, I had a car in Rome when we met, and uh, oh my God, I spent more money on tickets than driving the car, you know. Do you remember the yes. traffic? <laughs> I, that's why I never drove in Rome. And when I would drive with someone, I would feel sorry for them because I know they were going to get a ticket, going too fast, going through a red light, making an illegal turn, going into a zone where you're not supposed to go, parking where you can't park. Except so many, so many reasons to get a ticket. Yeah, yeah. Now, even if you wanted to drive, uh, like, well, without making any any in, in, infractions, anything, you would t- you would get a ticket anyway. It's just impossible. That, that's right, because the person behind you is going to be going fast <laughs> and blowing the horn and pu- and pushing you through the red light. Definitely, definitely. So that's a big difference. I I enjoy the ma- I enjoyed the mass transit in Rome for decades. But as I got older, I didn't want to do that anymore, especially for my wife. And so here we have our own car and we go where we want, when we want. Is is where you live a a flat? Is that correct? An apartment? It's a condominium. Yes. It's a two-story with a basement. And uh, we bought it for... Uh, 80,000 euro, more or less, $90,000. It's uh, 100 square meters. And uh, yeah, we like it. Yeah, in Rome, you would, have paid, you would have paid 1 million for that. Yes, yes, with a pool, you'd pay, uh, you'd pay a lot of money. So, but the best years of my life were spent in Rome. Uh, and with the summers going to England or Belgium or France or Germany, uh, those were the best years of my life living in Europe, based in Rome. We, we actually met, no, we met in Rome, not in England, but we went to England together once. I don't remember if you met in England first, and then we went to England, or we met in England, and then we met in Italy. I don't remember that. Do you? I believe I met you. Uh, you picked me up at the airport in, in England. Oh, my God. Yes, I was the driver back then. <laughs> you were the driver, and you were such a gentleman. I was positively impressed with you. So, so then, then you told me about the, business, the, the, about the school in Rome, and then when I came back, I joined the school. Yes, and you oh. became qualified. And I became qualified the next year. Yeah, yeah, the next year. That's Beautiful. Right. Oh, my God, this is so good to remember all these things. Beautiful. 
I like that. And uh, because, you know, sometimes my memories are fuzzy, you know, you don't remember, you, I remember it all, but I don't remember what first, what second, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember 1970. Ah. <laughs> you had fun, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> I, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God! And what about your wife, Daniela? What, what, what does she do? She she's still teaching English? Oh yes, she's my partner, and she's my competition. Oh, as well. So, ah, uh, well, because if we have like a two-hour lesson with one student, we will share. She'll do one hour, and I'll do one hour. And uh, if she goes first. I really have to try hard to look good after her because she's an excellent uh, tutor. She, she makes and you so look I, bad. She makes she, me, she yeah, makes you look and bad. Unless, unless I try very hard, I look, I pale in comparison. Yeah, so you should go first, yeah? And I'm one of the best. <laughs> I'm one of the best tutors that I've ever met, and uh, she's surpassing me, so it's it's... It's very disturbing, but it makes me happy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, how they say good entrepreneurs or good people, like not good, not, not good, but uh, intelligent people create a surrounding with people better than themselves around them. You know, it's good when you have people who are better than you. Yeah, it, ma it makes yeah, you improve. And I, yeah. And I like that spiritually, too. I think if we seek out people who are spiritually uh, enlightened, that helps us become better people, too. Yeah, and this, this is, going to be, is, going, is definitely going to be the topic for the next level. So for the moment, we can stop here and then uh, we continue the conversation now. Grazie per aver ascoltato questo episodio del podcast di Inglese Vero. A prescindere dal tuo livello, ti consiglio comunque di riascoltare il podcast più volte. Se sei all'inizio, riascoltare ti servirà per poter capire meglio e farci l'orecchio. Ogni persona che intervisto ha un modo di parlare inglese diverso e serve tempo per farci l'abitudine. Se il tuo livello è un po' più alto, riascolta per cogliere parole ed espressioni che non hai colto la prima volta. E se proprio vuoi trarre il massimo dal podcast, riascolta anche successivamente cercando eventuali errori miei e del mio ospite. Indipendentemente dal fatto che tu li possa trovare o meno, indipendentemente dal fatto che esistano, questo di per sé è un esercizio potentissimo. In alcuni episodi trovi anche la trascrizione completa che ti aiuterà a capire e verificare l'ascolto. Dove questo sia disponibile troverai il link nella descrizione. Aiutami a diffondere il podcast lasciandomi un commento, soprattutto se il podcast ti è piaciuto, e condividendolo con i tuoi amici. Più saranno gli ascolti, i download e i commenti, più potrò proseguire con altri episodi sempre più utili e interessanti. Tu sei la mia motivazione. Se non mi conosci, ti invito nel mio sito www.ingleseVero.it dove trovi contenuti e curiosità su come imparare, mantenere e praticare inglese in modo concreto. In modo vero, come lo chiamo io. E poi potrai anche contattarmi se ne avrai bisogno.